Today I would like to share some of results on thromodynamics in patients with hemophilia A. Hemophilia A is an X-linked bleeding disorder. That means that it uh, occurs almost exclusively in males and one in 5,000 uh, men is suffering from this disease. The bleeding that largely depends on the level and the function of coagulation factor 8 and the bleeding that's seen is after tooth extraction, trauma or surgery. There's quite a number of laboratory tests available that we need in our daily diagnostic laboratories, but still we are not completely uh, satisfied with them and there's a need for optimization. One of the uh, possibilities uh, we can use to, for optimization is to use the hemostatic potential. So that means the balance of prothrombin conversion and thrombin inactivation. And if we use that in hemophilia A patients, it may be helpful for treatment management in these patients. <clears throat> so the aim of our study was to assess the balance of prothrombin conversion and thrombin inactivation in patients with hemophilia A by exploring the thrombin generation curves. And in the first part of the presentation, I will show you the results where we investigated the balance of these two processes in mild, moderate and severe hemophilia A patients and in healthy controls and the inter-individual inter variability of the latter. So just as a very brief uh, update, the thrombin generation curve, we've seen it several times, we follow the thrombin formation in time and it provides more information than just looking at the fibrin formation. So that is also why it, we think it might be helpful. The thrombin <coughs> generation curve, on the left you see a normal thrombin generation curve and in the middle and in the, <coughs> sorry, <coughs> in the right panel you can see when, what happens when the balance is disturbed more towards um, a coagulation or a bleeding situation. So the modeling of thrombin inactivation focuses very much on the part of the inhibition, inhibition of thrombin over time. And then is, this inhibition is mainly be, done by antithrombin, alpha-2 macroglobulin and fibrinogen. These can all bind to uh, thrombin and therefore make less thrombin present in the, in the reagent mixture. And you see here the different formulas that are used using this uh, information from the uh, thrombin generation curve to calculate the different components that uh, inhibit uh, the thrombin. So thrombin um, dynamics offers the possibility to look at more than just the total curve. Here you see it graphically, the thrombin dynamics um, have the prothrombin conversion, that's called here PC total, that is very similar to the uh, ETP, the thrombin generation uh, area under the curve that's often used. We can also calculate the maximum rate. We can calculate the thrombin antithrombin uh, component and the thrombin alpha-2 macroglobulin component. So this, especially the, the calculation of these last two components is new in the thrombin dynamics approach. So here, uh, the total overview. On the left, you see the normal parameters that you use for thrombin generation. And on the right, you see that we can get much more information on the prothrombin conversion and it's uh, the thrombin degradation. There's a lot of uh, opportunities by using the thrombin dynamics and you can obtain much more information from the measurement and separate the pro and anticoagulant. You can investigate the mechanisms of action and pinpoint differences in thrombin generation and there's a possibility for computational modeling. So we were interested, to, uh, as I said at the beginning, to look at the thrombodynamics in hemophilia uh, A. And our uh, hypothesis is that uh, this thrombodynamic analysis would really be helpful in uh, understanding more what is happening in these patients. So we included 26 hemophilia A patients that were seen at the Erasmus MC in, in Rotterdam and we included 27 age and sex matched control subjects. The hemophilia A severity was based on the patient's factor 8 levels with an one-stage coagulation assays. 
So we had uh, 11 mild hemophilia A patients, five moderate, uh, 10, sorry, 10 moderate and five severe. So the methods that were used for the factor VIII clotting activity assay was a one-stage method on the STA with CK pressed and STA immune deficient factor VIII plasma. In the CAT assay, the calibrated automated thrombinography, we used 18 microliters of plasma, added tissue factor 20 microliters and either one or five picomolar, and this was Innovin. Uh, we added four micromolar phospholipids or 20 microliters of a calibrator. And the thrombin generation um, assay was initiated by the addition of uh, chromogenic, chromogenic substrate and calcium. Here you see the, um, the, the average curve. So on the, the left, you see the curve that is uh, coming from a healthy individuals. And the lower curve that is uh, moved slightly to the right is the curve for the hemophilia A patients. And if from these curves, you uh, plot the peak height and the uh, ETP, so the total thrombin generated, you can see that there's quite a difference between the healthy individuals and the hemophilia individuals, although there's also some uh, overlap. So if we look at the specific thrombin dynamics uh, variables, you see that the PC total is also clearly lower in the, um, in the hemophilia patients. The PC max is, uh, is really very different But if you look at the, <clears throat> at the TDC, you can see that it's, yeah, that is quite a, uh, a lot of, um, of overlap with the, uh, with the healthy individuals. So why is the thrombin generation reduced in hemophilia? And the results from this analysis show that the pro-thrombin conversion is very much reduced, but the thrombin activation, inactivation, so the TDC in the previous slide, is only slightly reduced. So for thrombin generation in hemophilia A, the uh, test result is reduced, but not fully absent, and it can be attributed to an imbalance in the pro- and anticoagulants in hemophilia A patients. So with a low factor eight, there's an impeded production of thrombin and it shifts the hemostatic balance towards an over anticoagulated system, which is associated with bleeding because, because thrombin inactivations me mechanism remain largely unchanged in hemophilia A. So the second aim was to see whether uh, reducing uh, anti-thrombin levels would help in restoring the thrombin generation curves in uh, hemophilia A patients. And we did this using in silico experimentation, especially uh, Romy de, de Raad Kremers did this analysis. So uh, thrombin generation was measured with the CAT assay method using uh, the reagent with a low uh, tissue factor concentration. And then thrombin dynamics analysis was used to extract the different parameters that I mentioned uh, previously. And the effect of anti-thrombin levels on this conversion and the thrombin inactivation were modeled for each individual patient. So for 14 different curves were, were generated for each patient by varying in silico the anti-thrombin levels from 100% to 2.5%. So here you see a busy slide, but I'll walk you through it uh, slowly. On the left, or the first figure on the upper left, you see that with a normal uh, anti-thrombin concentration, you have a very low peak height. And if you look at the figures below it, you shall also see that the ETP and the velocity index are very low. But then if you move more towards the right in these figures, you see that by lowering the anti-thrombin concentration, so be aware that 100% is left and 10% is on the right, you see that the, all these uh, parameters um, become higher and uh, for many patients they end up in the, in the normal range. Of course, lowering your anti-thrombin level to 10% would be a really big step. And the question is whether the clinicians would be uh, interested in doing that. But it's to illustrate that, uh, that it actually, the, the approach works in these, uh, in these patients. In the figures in the, in the middle, you see the uh, simulated uh, levels um, for 100% and 50% 
for mild, moderate and uh, severe hemophilia patients. And you can see that there you also see uh, an increase in all the uh, parameters. So the figure on the right is kind of a summary of all these results. The dotted line shows you the curve for the uh, controls. And uh, the other curves are with increasing antithrombin concentrations. And you see that the uh, upper curve, which is with 10% antithrombin, uh, in height comes much closer to the uh, to the levels of, to the curve of a control individuals. So this was uh, previously also published uh, by Romy for uh, healthy uh, individuals or normal plasma samples. And uh, the left two uh, columns show you all the variables for increasing prothrombin levels. And there you see that in the increasing factor two levels, you get more, more thrombin generation and the right two uh, columns show you the results with uh, increasing antithrombin levels and then you see that it uh, uh, catches more thrombin and you get lower curves with higher antithrombin levels. So this is very similar in the hemophilia patients and in the healthy controls. The similar uh, analysis have been done for uh, varying concentrations of factor 5 and factor 10 and again on the left two columns you see the results for increasing factor 5 levels and there you can see that in um, it doesn't really make a big difference whether your factor 5 level is 10% uh, or 100% but if it goes uh, below that then you can see that there's a big effect on the uh, on the, uh, the variable parameters of the thrombin generation curve and for factor 10 you can see that also the effect is, is largest for the very low levels, but there the curves are a bit less steep. So in summary for the thrombin dynamics, we can get much more information from a thrombin generation measurement. We can study pro and anticoagulant processes during thrombin generation separately. And we can investigate mechanisms of action and pinpoint differences in thrombin generation to the two pathways. And the last few examples I showed you are some possibilities of computational modeling. So uh, the total conclusion of uh, what, what I presented today is that the thrombin generation test results is reduced in hemophilia A patients, but not fully absent and can be attributed to an imbalance in the pro and anticoagulants in hemophilia A patients. And in the second part, I showed you that lowering the antithrombin partly restores the thrombin generation in hemophilia A patients. So finally, I want to acknowledge from, uh, from our department, Department of Hematology, uh, Iris van Moort, who participated in this study by uh, finding all the hemophilia patients that were here. And uh, of course, also the people from uh, Maastricht and especially uh, Romy, who did most of the uh, analysis for the thrombin dynamics. Thank you very much for your attention.